Hey, you cute people. Today we're going to continue our treatment of the cardiovascular system. In the last lecture, we talked about how cardiac muscle cells initiate and respond to action potentials in order to create um, a, a muscle contraction and a pumping heart. In this section, we're taking a step back and we're going to look at how all of that is coordinated to enable heart function. So we're going to look at the cardiac cycle, and the cardiac cycle includes basically a whole billion different uh, characteristics about heart function all in one place. So we're going to look at one heartbeat from total relaxed, chillin' heart, which, you know, happens 60 times every minute, to contraction, pumping blood, and back to relaxed, awesome, chillin' heart. While we're doing this, we're going to look at the EKG or the ECG. The EKG is actually, you might look at this little thing and be like, wow, that's, that looks like almost an action potential graph. And it is a treatment of um, voltage or electrical activity in the heart. However, it is the sum of all electrical activity in the heart. So all the action potentials that are happening throughout the heart and the directions, the different directions that they're going, if you add them all up together, you can get this shaped wave. And this right here, we can actually correlate the bumps and ridges on the ECG wave with the specific events that are taking place during the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle also involves volume. So we want to look at when are chambers full, when are they over full, when are they not very full, and, and that's something that we'll keep, take into account in this. We're also going to look at pressure. If you can imagine, if, if the heart is almost like a balloon that's filled with water. And you can squish it, you can squeeze and increase the pressure on the fluid in there, or we can like open up a little out spout and release the pressure and move fluid along. So there's all sorts of interesting pressure um, factors that are going to come into consideration as we look at the cardiac cycle. We're going to look at valves and heart sounds. And um, in anatomy, we definitely talked about the fact that the valves prevent backflow of the blood. It enables the blood to just move in one direction throughout the body. And those valves, <clears throat> when they are preventing backflow, they literally snap shut. And the snapping shut is the, the sounds, the lub-dub that we hear when we listen to our hearts. I feel like there's something else that we're going to um, consider. We need two vocabulary words, especially because a heart beat is contracting parts of the heart. So we're going to have two ways to do two two vocabulary words to describe contraction and relaxation. We have systole, and that is contraction. And so our Chambers of our heart actually contract at different times. So you can have ventricular systole, which means the ventricles are contracting, or atrial systole, which means our atria are contracting. And because of our electrical conduction system that we learned about in the last lecture, we can actually, those happen at different times. The other term is what? Go ahead, take a wild guess. Diastole. And diastole is relaxation. So again, if the ventricles are relaxing, which they do during the cardiac cycle, then it, we call that ventricular diastole. So we are going to break the cardiac cycle into five different like stages and characterized by whether we are having um, ventricular diastole, atrial diastole, systole, vanahana, vernahana. 
And the first one we're going to talk about is when both atria and ventricles are in diastole, so everybody is relaxed. That's where we're going to start in the cardiac cycle, knowing that the whole thing is a big cycle, so we could literally start anywhere. Onward. 